For the balance of this hour, we are joined by Mike Rivero of WhatReallyHappened.com, fellow GCN radio host. He joins us once a month here. Of course, I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com. We just began simulcasting uh, the last two hours and 45 minutes of this radio show. We always take a portion of the show and uh, transmit it visually for PrisonPlanet.tv members. I want to shift gears into the economy. I want to get into the burgeoning police state, the attack on the Internet, uh, and a host of other issues with Mike Rivero. But in the balance of this short segment, since we were just talking about Senator Kerry going over to Israel this week saying, please don't launch an attack on Iran. Uh, we have the military saying they don't want to do it, but most of the newspapers pushing it. Uh, I do want to get Mike Rivero's take on what's happening in the Middle East right now. Mike Rivero, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me there, Alex. And my take on the Middle East is, uh, as you point out, we have a group of individuals in the United States and in Israel who want yet another war on Israel's enemies. They're still pushing as hard as they can. About two weeks ago, leading up to the Olympics, there was this huge, renewed propaganda effort to try and convince America that Iran is some kind of a threat to us. They didn't get any traction with that, and they've kind of backed off. Then we were hearing about how Israel might just go ahead and attack Iran without the permission of the United States. They were supposed to vote on that in the Knesset on Sunday. I don't think they got the vote. They're not acting like they got it. Now, yes, last night we got this statement from Hillary Clinton that renewed, uh, new sanctions against Iran may take a couple of months. And so I think the uh, news story we were seeing about how Russia was now open to sanctions was not 100% accurate because what Russia really said is what they've always said, if there was evidence of uh, a nuclear weapon program in Iran, they would support more sanctions. But they're not willing to just support them uh, as things are right now. What about Iranian statements that we've been seeing from Ahmadinejad and others that they expect Israel to attack them in the spring or summer? Uh, it seems a very reasonable expectation. I think the only reason Israel hasn't attacked yet is because the American government cannot get the support of the American people for another war and cannot get the support of the American people for any more assistance and aid in Israel's wars against other countries. I think uh, Operation Cast Lead in Gaza may prove, in hindsight, to have been Israel's greatest political miscalculation. They're trying to basically rebrand and spin it away as no big deal, but I think the world got a real wake-up call about what Israel is really like, and the American people, by and large, do not want to support that either morally or financially and because of that I, I think that's putting a break on the situation now of course our future is always under the control of whichever world leader is the least mentally stable and there are definitely people in Israel who are capable of ordering an attack against Iran knowing that Israel could not withstand a counterattack but just absolutely serenely confident that they can get the US to come in spend American dollars shed American lives to protect Israel from and and then don't let a good crisis go to waste. Get us into a crisis. Uh, we're going to come back and, and finish up on this topic because we know Israel, at least large sectors of their government, as you just said, the Knesset isn't really going for it right now, so that's some good news. But large sectors of the Israeli government, including their leader, Netanyahu, do want it right now. And they have some allies, the military-industrial complex and the big banks that want a new political distraction to bring in this new bank of the world that's being pushed. We'll talk about that. Or do you feel the same? Bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, the United well, States has become an engine of oppression and preemptive war and Just wars of aggression. We're being robbed by the same offshore you banks that own the big military industrial complex that are making hundreds of billions a year off the surveillance grid being installed all over the world, but predominantly in England, the U.S. and Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And they want new wars. And they are waging war against our liberties and freedoms. And I was talking to Mike Rivero about the fact that Israel says they want to go to war with Iran. They have some allies, though, don't they, Mike, in that the corrupt corporations need this political distraction and they need because they know if we're in a war, people will put up with losing their jobs or having their pension funds seized. 
they hope that people will put up with losing their jobs and having their pension funds seized. Uh, it's This kind of war's distraction has worked before, but this is a very new age, and we're going into this potential escalation of conflict with the American people already polling as two-thirds are already angry with the federal government. They don't trust the government. They don't trust the banks. They understand that wars are just a big money-making deal. It places, you know, the banks want wars. They don't even care which side wins or loses because both sides go into debt. And the, the American people certainly understand this. And so I think the reaction of the American public to a new war is going to be dramatically different from what the government and the corporations and the banks hope it will be. We understand about the military industrial complex. We understand that Iran is not actually a threat to the United States of America. We understand that we were lied into the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and that we're engaging in these covert wars in Pakistan, Somalia and Yemen. We're killing more civilians than we are enemy combatants. And the American people, I think, are really kind of fed up. I think a new war in Iran is going to blow up in the government's face. I think that's the reason it hasn't started yet. The only way Iran is a threat, and this is just from my own common sense, but I've seen a lot of top analysts say the same thing, is if you do attack them, according to the law of war, if you're preemptively attacked, you can fight back any way you want. Like, U.S. militaries always put special forces in behind enemy lines to blow up dams, to attack police stations, to engage in terror attacks. That's just called uh, you know, guerrilla warfare. But then the media has said if Iran so much as fires anti-aircraft guns at Israeli or U.S. jets while they're bombing them, that that's an act of terror. I mean, this is mass mental illness where anyone who buys into this is, is basically the equivalent of saying anyone who raised a hand against Hitler was bad or anyone who raised a hand against Stalin was bad, uh, that you don't have a right to raise your hand against an aggressor. Yeah, it's basically, it's the how dare you fight back at us kind of situation. And, or as Eddie Izzard would say, you know, are they allowed to do that kind of mentality? And it, it is. I mean, you know, we're waging war on all these countries. And I think this is an extension of this whole idea that we're somehow doing these nations a favor. We saw that with the run-up to Iraq, that they're going to greet us with flowers. And therefore, anybody who's shooting back at us is just being a spoil sport. The same thing going into Iran. We're just bringing those people democracy. Of course, they're going to welcome us. And the only people shooting back at us are a bunch of malcontents. And it's, it's completely absurd. Absurd. The people that are shooting back at the American forces are the ordinary, everyday men, women, and children who live in a country, and they want to hang on to it. They don't want to see it taken over well, by another U.S. puppet. We know why FEMA, in all their manuals, demonizes the founding fathers and calls them terrorists, because the British were invading, and they were fighting back against the imperial power, and that is terrorism. And if you read the internal Pentagon documents, the banks in Serbia and Iraq and other places they want to wreck the infrastructure so the big banks can come in with loans at 30 percent interest with our tax money paying for it and take over their countries they, they they know there's not going to be roses they know they're not liberating we know in every case where the West has its druthers it installs dictators or oligarchs over these countries and actually puts Muslim extremists back in power in Afghanistan and into power in Iraq because they like them they just want to keep the turmoil going because the turmoil creates business opportunities for American interests. This is a war to impose American Western banks on the rest of the world. When you hear the buzz phrase, clash of civilizations, it's literally a war between two banking systems. You have the Islamic banking system on one, and you have the Western-style banking system on the other, the reserve banking system. And as I've pointed out many, many times before, the problem with the Federal Reserve banking system is because all the money represents a loan from the private sector central bank to the people the instant that first federal note uh, federal reserve note goes into circulation more money is owed to the banking system than is actually in existence and this is why we have recession after recession after depression after depression and now they want to impose the same thing on the rest of the world we'll talk about the global dictatorship of the bank straight ahead a financial black hole designed from its inception to fully dominate and create neo-feudalism. They then come in with the phony environmentalism to camouflage hope of slavery.